Hey everybody, welcome back to the Consumer Warrior Podcast. The podcast is dedicated to helping you with your big debt problems. If you're just dabbling in debt, this isn't the podcast for you. We deal with the big debt problems like repossession, debt collection, lawsuits, foreclosure, bankruptcy, and all the other horrible financial problems that are out there. We help you to help yourself. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, John Skiba. And on this episode of the podcast, I wanted to talk about a question I get quite a bit in my law practice, and that is for people who are looking to file for bankruptcy, they want to know if they can keep their car as they go through that process. And I'm going to answer that today. But before I do that, I want to remind you that this show is brought to you by the Consumer Warrior Project. If you are dealing with some of these serious debt problems and you're looking for help as you're navigating the court system or even deciding whether you should make a big decision like bankruptcy, um, you can go over to my website at legal.coach. That's the actual website, www.legal.coach, where I have different video tutorials, templates, forms, all of that there to help you with things like bankruptcy, debt collection lawsuits, and debt settlement. Again, that's legal.coach. Head on over there and check that out. Okay, as to today's question, as far as what happens to your car if you're filing for bankruptcy? Now, I'm going to take this with the background that you're filing a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, which is what most people file that go through this process. Uh, chapter 13 is a whole different beast, and I'm going to save that for another day. But in Chapter 7, the first thing that the court does is they have us divide up your debts into really two categories. They look at secured debts, which are debts that have collateral or some type of property attached to them. And we have to list those. And also your unsecured debt, which are things like credit card debt, medical bills, essentially debts that don't have uh, property attached to them. <clears throat> so with, when it comes to unsecured debts, that's a reason why most people file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy is to eliminate those unsecured debts. And in most cases, that's what happens. The credit card debts, the medical bills, personal loans, those types of things go away completely. Uh, there are some unsecured debts that do survive bankruptcy. Uh, a lot of taxes will survive bankruptcy as well as student loan debt. But all the other ones generally go away through that process. Now, secured debts like a car payment or a house payment, you know, something that has property that's actually tied to the loan, those types of debts typically do not go away um, as, as long as you, as far as if you want to continue to pay on them to keep the asset. So if you want to keep your car in a chapter seven, generally that's permitted, but you have to keep making the payment on it. Uh, sometimes I have people say, Hey, you know, I want to file bankruptcy, get rid of all this debt on my car so that I own that thing free and clear. <laughs> And uh, unfortunately, that's not the way it works. You don't get a free car in bankruptcy. Uh, you if you want to keep it, you actually still have to continue to make those monthly payments. And in fact, if you stop making those monthly payments, the lender for your vehicle, they can come into the bankruptcy court and ask for permission to repossess it. Same thing happens with house payments. If you want to keep your house, you got to continue to make those monthly payments on it. Now, with car loans in, in particular, there's something that you have to do in a Chapter 7 if you want to be able to keep the car, and that's that you have to sign a reaffirmation agreement. What this is, this is a document that is generally prepared by the lender that essentially you reaffirm the terms of your original loan. They're saying, hey, here's what's owed on this, here's what your interest rates are, and you have to sign off on it saying you're going to continue to pay it going forward. Now, one little thing you got to be careful of with reaffirmation agreements is what this does is if you sign it and the court approves it, and then down the road, you know, say a year after your bankruptcy is over, all of a sudden you uh, fall into additional financial hardship or something happens and you can't keep making the car payments and they repossess the car, you will then be liable for any balance that's still owed on it. So that's one of the dangerous things a little bit about reaffirmation agreements with a car loan is you really want to make sure it's a car that you like and a car that you can afford. Because if the court approves that reaffirmation agreement <clears throat> after a Chapter 7, you're in a situation where you could become liable for that balance. So, so I, I hope that clears that up a little bit as far as secured and unsecured debts. If you're filing Chapter 7 bankruptcy, you will be able to keep your car so long as you keep making those monthly payments on it. If you're not making the payments now or if you stop after the bankruptcy, you're going to have problems just like you would if you hadn't filed for bankruptcy. So if you want to learn more about uh, bankruptcy and some of the pros and cons of it and really dive deep into whether it's a good option for you, again, head over to my website at legal.coach where we actually have 
have a video tutorial that'll take you in a deep dive as, as far as the ins and outs of bankruptcy and whether it's a good option for your situation. So that's going to do it for this episode and I will catch you next time.